Hi, in weekly roundup number 40, we're seeing sensors, wireless, SBCs, and the demise of a Polish physicist. The Matrix Voice was an Indiegogo campaign I mentioned back in weekly roundup number 25. It was successfully funded there, but now they're back on Kickstarter. Not sure why, as this board is exactly the same as Indiegogo at the same price. Have they run out of money for production? Who knows? But it's not gaining the traction that it did on Indiegogo. This next one looks like a promising alternative to using a motion capture suit. It uses flexible strain sensors instead of IMUs to determine the movement of limbs. Not sure how accurate it is, but from the demos it seems to be able to be used in golf swing analysis and gameplay. This next one is a small Arduino Zero compatible board from Rabbit Prototypes. Contains a small 96 by 64 OLED display and micro SD in a small 33 mm squared package. Can be powered from USB or directly from 3.3 volt supply. If you have a Pi Zero and want to use a camera, then this case allows you to contain both whilst giving you a flexible head to position the camera anywhere you want. The Protractor is a cool idea. It's a proximity sensor board designed for robotics that allows you to measure angles between objects at up to 10 degree accuracy. This gives you much better obstacle avoidance for your robots. It's powered from 6 to 14 volts with 85 milliamp average consumption. The Nano Sound is a DAC sound hat for your Pi that contains a PCM5122 DAC which is capable of 24 bit 384 kHz sampling rate and an ultra low noise regulator giving you some decent sound output. Also has six buttons, IR receiver and small OLED, so is ideally set up as a media player. The Smart Mote is a universal IR remote with onboard Alexa connectivity. It has five IR LEDs to give you full coverage as well as headers for additional IR LEDs and an ESP Wi-Fi module pre-programmed with IR codes for popular devices. The Swidget is something that allows you to embed smart home devices into your existing power outlet. They have a number of modules from Bluetooth speakers, USB chargers, IR and motion sensors. It seems to be only for the US market, so everyone else is out of luck, but a good idea anyway. The Allobricks looks promising. It's a STEM education kit that can be placed on normal Lego trays that are used to program the movements of a small Lego robot. It seems to be one of the more complete kits, giving you some coding concepts such as multi-threading, logic loops, parameters, sensors and functions. So far I haven't seen any kit aimed at this young age group capable of teaching such complex coding concepts. Now this is a blast from the past. Good old Pong kept us amused for hours as kids, until my dad got annoyed enough to cut the power cord to the TV. The Retro Ball is a DIY kit giving a 32 by 32 RGB LED matrix. Potentiometers, buttons, pick MCU on a 250mm squared circuit board. It also has headers to plug in an Arduino to extend out its capabilities. Nice. Nothing interesting on Indiegogo this week apart from the usual spinners, but on crowd supply, the Spora is another IMU based sensor running off a coin cell battery. There's a lot of them around these days, but this one promises interchangeable components such as Bluetooth, sensors, and also the MCU but I'm not sure how they are going to pull that off. It will be interesting to see once it goes live. Then there's the tiny pad, which is pegged as a handy tool for USB-C power adapter testing. No more info apart from that on this one. My IR are back again with another FPGA board, but this one is a cheaper version called the Z-Turn Lite. It packs a Xilinx Zinc 7007 SOC, which runs an ARM Cortex A9 SOC and FPGA. 512 megs RAM, 5 gig EMMC, USB, gigabit Ethernet, and ST slot. They are currently taking pre orders for around $69 US. And the QB Board 7 has finally hit the market. This one is a step up from the previous model with a Semi S700 quad core Cortex A53, 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, 8 gig EMMC, SATA 3, HDMI out, RTC, LiPo header, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth via the popular AP6212 and gigabit ethernet. A nice board, but will be interesting to see what this alternative Cortex SOC is like. I mentioned the Nano Pi K2 back in weekly roundup number 31, but now Friendly Elec have released an Ubuntu Core OS image. You can pick up the latest image from Mediafire. 
Back in weekly roundup number 31, I mentioned the demise of several Intel Maker flagship products. Well, guess what? They are now abandoning the Arduino 101 and Intel Curie. This means that Intel have now exited the Maker scene completely and will affect the recently released Yudu x86 SBC. They have until July 2018 to change their designs, but I would see it as a minor design change, and there's still plenty of alternatives. Still, it's a bit of a shame. However, Intel have just released a product called the Movidius Neural Compute Stick, so who knows, maybe they aren't ditching the maker scene. This is a pretty cool device designed to provide visual processing and deep learning capabilities that would be impossible for most SBCs. Accessible over USB, so you can extend processing power by adding more. The only catch is that it requires an x86 64-bit SBC, and it's not supported under ARM. Another RTL8195 module joins the market. This one from Minjin IoT. This one is slightly different in that it also provides onboard NFC. And STMicro has finally come out with a competitor to the ATtiny with the very easy to say STM8S001J31. Of course, this is a small 8-pin package that provides almost a capability match to the ATtiny at around 20 cents for volume orders. It's always nice to see more options. And this one I picked up from Peter Scargill's blog, which is possibly the cheapest touch switch around. You can pick up 10 units for around a dollar a piece. Or rather, you used to be able to. Seems everyone has bought them out, but IC Station have them still. At $2.80 each, they are still pretty cheap. Over at Tindy, there's a bunch of interesting things. If you want a super accurate temperature sensor, this I2C based breakout delivers a 0.1 degree accuracy over a minus 5 to 50 degrees Celsius range. It's not a huge range, so it can only be used in applications in moderate temperature zones. This is pretty cool. It's an optical SPDIF audio switch, can handle four optical and three SPDIF inputs, but the cool thing is that it will auto switch to whatever channel is active. Nice. It also has an optional high quality DAC support using the ES9023 Sabre DAC and the firmware updated over USB. If you're in need of opto isolators, this board provides four bidirectional channels. Or this board probably is the smallest USB hub I've seen around. And if you're running out of USB ports, why not use the mini PCIe slots USB port and extend it out with this board. This is actually quite handy and I'll pick up one of these. Eviv looks pretty cool. It was the Hackaday 2016 Automation Challenge competition winner. And no surprise as it contains everything you want in a beginner's electronics kit. Very similar to all those old 120 in 1 electronics kits back in the 80s. Contains breadboard, TFT screen, Arduino Mega 2560, variable power supply, data acquisition channels, DAC, RTCs, motor drivers, touch sensors. This has absolutely everything. Coming in at over $100 US, it may seem expensive, but it's actually very cheap for what it is. At the other end of the spectrum is this very expensive MEMS spectrometer breakout. For almost $400 US, you get a very accurate C12880MA sensor used for such things as fluorescence spectroscopy. It's a device that's used in Peter Jensen's open source tricorder project. You can also pick this sensor up from Seed Studio. The IR Droid is an RF gateway running the RT5350 SOC running OpenWRT. Two Ethernet ports, Wi Fi, and two 433 MHz RF modules. A pretty complete package for the price. The original Hornbill was seen on Crowd Supply back in weekly roundup number 21. Well, now on Tindy, there's the Hornbill Minima, Minima, or however you say it, which is exactly the same as the original but in a wearable format. The Loduino is another Arduino and LoRa breakout. It contains an 8 mega 328 along with the RM2903 LoRa module. Also has LiPo charging and can draw 30 microamps on standby. This one has the micro FL connector, and this one has a soldered copper antenna. If you want to practice your SMD soldering, then this is really cool. It contains a sample of all the SMD package types you will potentially bump into, from 1206s down to 0201s. That's pretty tiny, and you'll need to have good eyes for that. If you're successful, then you should be able to light up all the LEDs. 
Another Arduino Pro Mini compatible board, this one contains an RFM69 LoRa module. It can run off a CR2450 battery or USB and is my sensors compatible. And here's another LoRa shield for an Arduino based on the RFM110L LoRa module. And from the same Tindy store, these LoRa module boards can accept an STM32 board, sometimes called the Blue Pill. Over at the major storefronts, IT have come out with a Sonoff RF bridge that will seamlessly bridge all your 433 MHz RF devices to a Wi-Fi network. This is a pretty good bang for your buck and is one of those set and forget devices. Meanwhile, over at Seed Studio, there's an IoT dev board called the Renasus S5D9. For 35 US dollars, you get a Cortex M4F MCU, 32 megs flash, 100 megabit ethernet, a bunch of motion sensors and microphone, and Grove and PMOD expansion headers, all running off 5.1 to 24 volt DC input. They also have in the EMW3166 Wi-Fi module and development board, both of which were mentioned back in weekly roundup number 38 and is a competitor to the ESP8266s. There's also the EMW3239 Wi-Fi module and development board, which is a competitor to the ESP32s. And something must be brewing in the Raspberry Pi Foundation camp as Seed are wanting to dump all their stock of Pi 2s at a reduced price of $20 US. However, it's only version 1.1 of the Pi 2, so it's not using the current generation of 2837 socks as exists in the Pi 3. Adafruit have updated the Gemma M0 from the ATtiny85 to the SAM D21 MCU and also contains LiPo battery support on a sewable PCB. While over at DF Robot, they have a LiPo charging and boosting module based on the MP2636 and a water turbine generator that outputs a constant 5 volts at 150 milliamps from a 4 litre per minute water flow. It'll start to push out 2.5 volts when hitting 3.5 litres per minute. Now I was going to run my espresso bin competition at the end of this video, but I ran out of time to organise it. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.